Man, I got a, some shit on my chest. So on the way over here, I'm driving. I get stopped by the police. Uh, I wasn't speeding, but, you know, I don't feel like I got the most confidence when I see police officers or law enforcement because I know I ain't had a driver's license. Now, if you know me, I ain't had a driver's license since 2006. I heard you been riding dirty. For 10 years plus. You rental cars. Yeah, getting them. Now, let me tell you how you get them rental, rental cars. cars. How you get them rental cars is with no license. You got to keep talking. We talked Boy, about that before. What you, you got, got to do? You, when you pull up to that rental car place, and this is exactly what I did before I got stopped, because I'm in the rental. I walk up to that rental car place. I get to that. Now, rental. what do you do to have a driver's license? Dude. This has happened in your real life. No yeah. bullshit. In my real life. I ain't had a driver's license since 06. Then had five cars, no driver's license. Driving cars off the goddamn lot. <laughs> No license though. Who the fuck said you going Bobby Mick Bobby? <laughs> Y'all Listen, gonna feel Bobby Mick Bobby. One thing they don't give a fuck about is if you got a license. Right, right. They can't turn down that damn payment. It's hard. They trying to sell cars. They don't give a shit. I get on. I, I get uh into L.A. I need to get a rental. Go over to the rental place. Uh, usually I go to Enterprise, but today I'm at National. Okay. You know, I'm at National. National walk up. Pull that ID out. I'm talking. Now you gotta paste that ID. You don't want to put that ID out too fast. Give him too much time to look at it. I'm talking to him. I mean, yeah. Here to pick him a reservation. I got a reservation right here. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta ask him that first question. Hey, which way is? You gotta ask for directions somewhere. You gotta be a phone. I don't give a damn where. Which way is the nearest target? I need to go over there right now. I need some camping shorts. Oh, Gotta throw Rolls them off guard. Got to throw them motherfuckers way right. over there. Target, camping shorts, black men. Wow. So, this is new. So let me tell you what happened. I throw him way over there. He over there. He still got to ask you for it. He, the oh, nigga got to ask you for it. No. You don't make him ask you for it. You have it out. So I'm Ooh. talking. I'm talking. I got that credit card Ooh, out. Hold on. That, y'all hear what he dropped in y'all spirit? You got to have that ID. You give it to them. Don't let them ask for it. When they ask, they got to good. Check. When you give it, they like, oh, he knows this. He already knows the He knows the He's focused on what he's Good, he good. Me. That's good. So I'm here. I need to figure out where the nigga's target place is. I need some camping to shorts. Up. Do they got good camping stuff out here? And what's a good campground? Because they're trying to get me to go to Big Bear for the weekend. And I'm not <laughs> sure if that's the best move. I got some people coming in from, uh, from Tacoma, Washington. Places and they flying in on 545. It's gonna be a lot of traffic because we're trying to get the campground before dark. You know, it's bears out. We don't want to be out there too late. Then the temperature drops. It's rough. I don't have another. Where time. you guys staying again? Uh, we're staying on the campgrounds in Big Bear. Now they told us that was a nice place to go to, but I need some camping supplies and I need some camping shorts. Some shorts that. How many days you need this reservation? Well, the reservation was for three days, but I might need to extend it to four. Okay. But I'll definitely call you guys if I think I'm gonna take it that way. So I'm talking my ass off. I get right through that reservation process. She hand me them some keys. Tell me where I need to go. Go out to get to that car. Jump in that car. I'm driving now. You know it's L.A. It's LA. They gonna double verify. Absolutely. You gotta you gotta check somebody to that before you get window. Window. Got that thing out and I'm talking. You got to keep talking again. Hey, now I go this way before I hand it. I made you which already way asked the left. Shit. What at Target? I got to get some camping shorts. Oh, Back to the to camping t- trip at Big now Bear. She, now, she want to tell me about Big Five. Oh, well, you should have went to Big Five. I said, are you sure Big Five still open? I thought Big Five's all closed down. No, no, no. I think it's the Big Five still open. Go that way. I gave her that ID. She looked at it. Gave it right back. Okay, go that way. Because she didn't want to mess up on her directions. Uh, good. I drive up out of there. I'm on Century. I'm pulling out. I'm blazing. I'm blazing. I'm flying coming up out that airport. I drive all the way down, pass over the 405. I see I ain't eating, and I see Roscoe's. I think I'm gonna stop and get me some Roscoe's. I want, I want to get me something to eat. So I pass through the light because the light is long to turn. I said I'm gonna just U-turn and come back up, catch that Roscoe's on the other side of the street. I U-turn. Soon as I U-turn, them boys. God damn. God shit. Dirty motherfuckers. So I get over. I pull over. I was like, shit, shit. I'm starting to think. I'm running my eye, my mind. Because in Texas, you got to know your, your, your situation because they're going to take you down. They're going to take you down for whatever tickets you got open. It ain't there. So I'm trying to figure out, do I got anything? No, I don't got nothing. I got one thing, but that really ain't a major thing. So I'm going to just deal with this. It's going to be all right. 
So he gets to ask me for my shit. He's middle of conversation. I hand him that ID. Yeah, so I was trying to go get to God, that target. Man, so get that big bear. I got a camping trip. You see the long way away from here, officer. Well, I still make it with this. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna process things. First of all, we're gonna look at the fact you don't have a driver's oh, license. Oh, he pulled up on your ass. He did halt your jazz. Dead in yeah, my ass. Yeah, how you get out of this, Minister Rail? So as fate would have it, I hit him with the pat. You know what the pat is, huh? Oh, I had it on me. I, I whoa, just had the mother. That's not my driver's license. That's not it. Now wait a minute. No, I'm get the thumb and through shit. <laughs> Crackhead out my peripheral comes around the side of that car, comes to the other side. He got on a leather trench coat, some J's, and some swim trunks. He got his coat closed. The officer, hey, sir, step back. He opens his jacket. Did you, you miss me? <laughs> well, you took me around the corner. I was waiting for him. I wanted to look dead in the eye. He opened up the coat. You took me around the world, Billy. Hey, hey, why, hey, why had you out there? Why yeah, you you took me out there, Billy. Hey, I'm going to back in. I'm going to start it off by pouring something in here. Oh, now, what listen, you got? one of our guests brought some liquor from overseas. Because they tired of us drinking that Steven Seagal. Because that Steven Seagal been putting motherfuckers all like guests been getting put Scotch on their ass. whiskey been cooking, niggas. That goddamn Steven Seagal 1300 will put you at the bottom of it is what? <laughs> all the answers to all your All problems. your goddamn problems. <laughs> so what we have here now, Billy, is we got some monkey shoulder. This can't be legal. Yeah, it's a blended malt this Scotch liquor. That sounds like what Steven Seagal is. Anytime monkey you blend some shit. Shoulder. A monkey shoulder. Yeah, come from Thailand. Yeah. Fresh out of top, man. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and pour up real quick. Fresh off of transvestite with that. Mm. That's what you fucking over there. You fucking transvestites. It's cool. That's what you into. No problem. Everybody's mad at Eddie Murphy for picking up them transvestites. Then I had to ask myself. Then I asked myself a serious question, Delay. I'm like, am I really mad he picked up a transvestite? How we know he knew it was a transvestite? Yeah, How he didn't think sketchy. it was just a bad bitch over there that needed some saving? Clue could have been you on Santa Monica, but hey, hold up, boy! You just made me think about something. <coughs> All my fellas do a boys trip once a year. It's the first boys trip to Vegas. Mm. We about seventy. Cousins, cats from college, we all we know each other. Mm -hmm. We never did this before. First time in Vegas, we fin a wild the fuck out. Mm -hmm. We in this nightclub in Vegas called Ra. It's in the Luxor Casino called Ra R A. Mm -hmm. Best DJ, dope atmosphere, long ass lines. I pretty much, I'm sort of trying to work my way into Vegas. I'm not in yet, but I can get past a fucking line. Yeah, you can work this line. You're going to work, work all my fellas in there. We in that deep. We ain't doing no table. We doing everything from the goddamn bar. Ain't no table. We ain't popping no goddamn bottles. We wasn't there yet. Okay, you want to toast this to somebody? Who Absolutely. Is this going to? Tips. Who is this going to? It's right here. <laughs> uh, that, that monkey that got you on hey, his man, shoulder. That monkey that already tapped me on my shoulder. Hey. Um, let's cheers to life, man. Yeah, we got to cheers to life, man. Health and wealth. Yeah. Let's cheers to that, man. Yeah, and this is for the people who said we wasn't going to be shit. They just said it. I'm going to tell you. A couple of them said it for me. You know what? That's how we're going to tell you. I'm going to tell, tell you the first person who told me I wasn't going to be shit. Who told you first? After your Vegas story. Go ahead. <laughs> Ooh. Where was I? Oh, shit, I'm on a monkey shoulder. That's where I'm at. Where was that with the Vegas story? You was just, y'all at the bar. You ain't buying no bottles. Ed Raw is going down. You finna finesse this line. We in here. I school past there. What I did was I took the hotel ID, which got you past the line. Right? Mm. What I would do is I would see somebody. Hey, man, listen. Let me use your card. And I bring it right back. It's just to get in the club. Sure, buddy. Cool. Go in there. We in there. We in that D. About seven to eight deep, maybe about seventy deep. We that's a lot over. of that's a lot of niggas a lot in, Vegas. Of nigg in Vegas. In Vegas, a lot of niggas because they ain't going for that. And at this point, like we, this is our first Vegas trip. We don't really know how to do it. We starting to learn how to do it. So, my partner KT is a tall, light skinned cat 
like 6'6". Six, six. Real cool cat. Real good conversation guy. He really, he's real good talker. So we were watching KT work the room. KT work the room. We look over. Badass broad in like all gold. Like gold shorts. Like the little shorts. He had perfect heels. Right. Had a little short crop cut. Yeah. So I see KT. KT ain't missing shit. He look over, see it, start making his move. He mm. over there putting it down. On KT on that motherfucking ass. Mm. Bartender say, "Hey D, he know me. Hey, that's your homeboy over there." Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Hey, he like dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm sorry. No, he don't like dick. Why are you acting like dick? See him talking to that bad bitch? That bad bitch got a dick. Go get your boy. Fuck it. I trust me. Excuse me, y'all. Katie, I need to holler at you. Ain't not right now. Nigga, absolutely right now. <laughs> absolutely. There's no other better time than right now. And you gotta you should have just said something to the diggers. I ain't bruh. I ain't say that for the society. I didn't want to be rude. Because I don't want to fight. Fight. I don't want to fight. This is what's going on. KT knowledge, man. It was good, man. You see me put it down? I, I, see, I see you put it down. Right. I definitely see you put it down. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, listen. Talking to the bartender. The bartender say that's a dude. Got a dick. Where? Nigga, nigga I don't know where, but this, this, this is a dick. Like, like, like. The, he don't want to believe it's got a dick. Oh, man. Man, go on, man. Let me finish my conversation. I can't let you finish that conversation. You got to go. That's a dick. Fuck that. I'm going to go ask her. Had the voice, everything. Beautiful face, titties, everything done. Hey, hey my homeboy was a <laughs> It's crazy. I don't even know how to say this. Um, my boy said, like, you a dude? Yeah, I was born a boy. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> he went from angry, but he was just changing emotions. He's like, "Are you fucking serious?" I mean, but how? Like how? Like how? He's like, he's like, you had the surgery. He's like, yeah, I had the surgery and everything. I looked in the nigga eyes. That nigga was actually contemplating when he said surgery. He said, "So like, ain't no dick down there." Hey, dog. Ain't no dick down there. Like, niggas don't want to let it go, dog. Nigga did not want to let it go. He was like, shit, I mean, you know, I mean, it is what it is, you know. I mean, I, but I don't swing like that. Just want to let you know that. Yeah. Right, cool. Hey, do you go on for a second? Let me talk to her for a second and say something. <laughs> <laughs> it's still want to do not want to like, let that shit ride. It's a tough one, man. At all, dog. You got them partners, man. Did I tell y'all about Davin Tesno getting my ass whooped on the side of the freeway? No, I ain't never heard Davin Tesno. Like the name, though. Is he crooked? Is Davin Tesno crooked? Body crooked, mind crooked, all the way crooked. Love Davin to death. So Davin's one of my partners that he's been my friend since high school. And he's that dude that comes around when shit's finna go to a different direction. <laughs> when shit's finna get off the wall crazy. I've been in several fights because of that. And he's always oblivious to him starting. Being the reason for it, right. First, first off, very much the reason. First one I'm going to tell you about is uh, my boy Energizer, Brandon Chambers, putting his government out there, Energizer, because we don't want to confuse who we talking about. He had a job working at the Radisson in Houston, Texas, which used to be the uh, host hotel for the Astrodome. It was uh, built to host all of the guests that would ever come in. Like presidents that stayed there. Uh, uh, one of the Barnum brothers invested in helping getting the hotel built because the Astrodome used to be one of the like wonders of the world because it was the first closed dome ball facility, like enclosed AstroTurf. All that shit is like historic because nobody ever had it. Without Houston having it first, it wouldn't happen nowhere. But it was all based off the ingenuity of Houston being the space city and all that shit. So anyway, this hotel is supposed to be this lavish hotel, Radisson. They got penthouses up in it. 
that are themed. It's 12 penthouses in the penthouse on the floor. And they have a club level inside of it that's built into it that housed the Astros clubhouse where they would have all the after parties after all the Astros home games back in the 60s. So as the hotel got older, this was a novelty floor that you would pay thousands of dollars to stay in. But as the the luster of the Astrodome faded, so did this hotel. All the hotels became built in the city. People stopped giving a fuck about the Astrodome. Other domes started being built other places. And then slowly this hotel is now like 60 years old. So Energizer is working security at this hotel. I don't know shit about this, but he gives me all this information, takes me on a tour. I see the penthouses. Now, there's this huge ass door. He's security guard. He's securing this huge ass hotel. Hotel so fucking big that the back half of the hotel ain't been getting booked out. My college, TSU, starts renting hotel rooms as dorm facility for students because we ran out of fucking space because our school fucked the money up on building <laughs> dormitories. And had niggas, fuck the money up. They fucked the money up and didn't have enough dorm rooms for all these incoming freshmen. So we over there. He's working security. He takes me to see the penthouse. And I know at this point I got to throw a party in this bitch. He's showing me the rooms. First room is built like a castle. Got a real life moat in it. Concrete bed. This bitch looked like King Arthur's resting place. Got a huge fucking winding staircase with a library in it that stretches like two and a half stories tall. Inside, another room themed like Tarzan. Fucking trees, like real fucking trees in that bitch. Got a fucking hammock in the top. Another set of trees with a bunk bed in it and another bed that's at the bottom. Room number three. I'm telling you these rooms for a reason. Room number three. Barnum, one of the Barnum brothers, as a reason of him coming and being one of the help, help design the penthouse, he had a circus theme room. Room that had a real life cage in it at the foot of the bed that was a trunk, but you could still get up in that bitch. So it's like a real life cage at the bottom of the bed. They got a swing in that motherfucker. They had a bunch of other little shit, but it was all themed like the circus. Real spooky, real weird. Room number four. This motherfucker was a peeping Tom's room. Have no way to express it other than that. You walk in, and there's a door that's hidden. You push through that door, there's a bedroom. Behind that room, there's a big-ass glass mirror, and you can look through and see the circus room and peeping Tom on that room for the wild shit that's going on. Real freaky. It also had a hidden closet that was behind a picture, and you could look and see what was going on in that room. So you could spy on the, the room you in and the room next to you. Real freaky, real weird. Last two rooms were two small, basic little penthouses that was all suited out that overlooked the city. So I say, look, dog. Then in the, in the, in the entrance way, there's the Astros clubhouse, big Astros logo, full club setting. I say, bro, how much they paying you? I was like, um, they like paying me twelve seventy five. In this time into year, this is good. Two thousand six, two thousand five, two thousand six. I'm like, look, bro, fuck it. You work overnight? I say, he said, yeah, I'll be here by myself. Nobody else be here. I'm the only person patrol. I got one other person with me from two to six. It's nobody else here. Fuck it. We gonna have a party in this bitch. <laughs> now, my party and my homeboy's party is different. I'm thinking six, eight people. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It's sexy. Everybody got a room to go in. We finna do what we gonna do. We legends. It's cool. We legends. <laughs> I tell Davin, Davin Tesno says, I got to see it. I said, nah, Davin, you can't see it. He said, nah, fuck it. We going up there. He get drunk off Paul Masson. We go up there. Daytime, he asking, where Energizer at? Where my nigga at? I say, bro, I don't think you could do that. Fuck that. That's my nigga. I've been knowing that nigga since fourth grade. I say, bro, you tripping. Jazza come at, he acting like he don't know us. He got his uniform on. Hey, gentlemen, what's going on? <laughs> so in the middle, of the, he, he looking at me talking about 1275. Don't fuck this up. Yeah. So Davin talking about, nigga, you know us. Don't act like oh, that. Sh- I said, oh. So Dav, Davin was like, please, man, show us the room. 
Energizer look at me. You could not tell him, huh? I said, man, he was going to invite the girls for the party. He got to know what, what space we need so we can do the shit the right way. We go up there. He like, nah, nigga. Nah. Nigga, fuck that. We doing it for the mo. <laughs> By saying that, he's saying we're doing it for the neighborhood. Right. The city. neighborhood just ain't where we live at. It's other neighborhoods around it. It's six high schools in Mo City. That's zoned to this area. So you doing it for six schools? He calling everybody. Niggas that ain't graduated yet. Niggas that ain't doing shit. Niggas that work at AutoZone. My nigga, my nigga Chris Rojas, he, he work at AutoZone on Court Road. He, he, <laughs> he the parts manager. I know when he got that call. He, hello, AutoZone, Court Road, what's up? He the parts manager called him. Hey, bro, hey, hey. Can I let call him? Because he had to hook up on the liquor, and he had a van. He could pick bitches up. Right. So he was like, hey, bro, we got a party spot. I can't tell you too much about it. Just get ready. Just get ready now. Go ahead, get ready. He said, man, I got to work tomorrow. He said, fuck that. We doing that shit tonight. Cisco, get ready. Click. He hung up with him. I maybe, because I started drinking power with him. We fucked up to about 345. Right. We done called 60 people. <laughs> 60 fucking people. We doing this shit tonight. We was fucking some twins from Texas a and I'm not going to put their names out. They start with T. You know who they are. <laughs> yeah, you know who they are. It don't matter. You listen to this. You just happen to find out your wife was fucking. And I'm going to tell you what she did in a minute. So... Uh, At this time, I'm not in the frat yet. I'm going to become a capital. That's like, that's my goal. Right. So we start inviting niggas we know from the mo. Of course, I know not to invite none of the bros, the capitals, because I'm not trying to be in that situation. Right. It get weird. The niggas get to ask me to do shit. Right. I'm trying to let my light, sh light shine right now. Right, let me live. He calls my nigga C. Lou. C. Lou, Chris Lewis, he went to Elkins. He calls Chris Lewis up. He acting like this nigga his fucking brother. Because first of all, that's how David is. Everybody his brother, like, by no relation. Right. But that's their brother. Hey, hey, Newt, we going, we partying. Now, let me explain something to you. What's very critical about this. David ain't a capital. <laughs> <laughs> but he feels that he can call niggas Noop, Q. I've seen this nigga step with some Qs in a party and shimmy. I've, nigga, I've been literally, same party. And I, I be, up in the shimmy and in the same. Listen, and nobody beat him up because it's Davin. Who is describing to me? Dog, this nigga, I, it's hard to explain. He little light skin. Miniature Billy. Miniature Billy. A little, a smaller me. Right. Look, dog, and this nigga don't give a fuck. And he get to drink and he think he can whoop he everybody. Okay, he that do okay. I got you. I he got think you. he can whoop everybody. He don't give a fuck. He don't give so a fuck. So he's like, okay, do I want to fuck, fight this nigga tonight over this shit? It's not because like you laughing because you know you can beat him up, but then right. he's like. You don't want to feel like you just don't feel like fighting this nigga tonight. I don't fucking deal he gonna with this fight you. shit, right? He gonna he, he gonna fight you. So he wanted to pesky motherfuckers. You punch this nigga, knock him out. He, he wake the fuck back up, still want to fight. Right. And, you just and drunk. Him. And then everybody, why'd you beat up Dad? <laughs> that nigga. <laughs> exactly. And you look crazy beating him up. So he didn't invite C. Lou. C. Lou invites the whole fucking chapter of campus that I go to school with. So I don't know shit about this though. I'm in there. I'm having a good time. I got my robe on. I'm Hugh Heffin it. I'm Big Willie and shit. I got it's girls coming in. My nigga Energizer, he got his work uniform. He coming by patrolling. He making sure shit is straight. He keep leaving. He like, yeah, nigga, save some bitches for me. Save some bitches for me. Yeah, nigga, you ain't here. You need to come back. So shit popping off. I stands up on top of this uh, like end table that's got to be 100 years old, antique. I'm standing on this motherfucker and I'm yelling, hey, look, these the motherfucking rules. I'm lit. Right. As fate would have it, there's ecstasy flowing in the room. Oh, more ecstasy. More ecstasy. One of our partners, C. Mo, Chris Morrison, he gets so fucked up during the daytime. Somebody thinks it's a good idea to leave him on the patio, passed out drunk. He wakes up and damn near jumps over the banister and kills himself. He, he, the fuck he, was at. he didn't know where he was at. So just imagine you pass you out drunk up, and, and you wake, wake up, up balcony. and you on a fucking balcony 12 stories up above the city and it's blowing, wind blowing. So he's screaming and got locked on the balcony. 
I'm telling everybody the rules like, hey, look, if you're going to fuck, we got condoms. <laughs> it, hey, look, if you don't want to use no condoms, that's on you. I'm not. I'm letting it be known. Uh, don't steal shit. Nigga, if you steal something, we're going to fight you. Hey, man, ain't no handcuffing in here. And no mean no. Now, how many women in here? How many women in here? Man, it's, 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 it's at this time, 60 people have been invited. 28 dudes, 40 girls, and That's they flowing in. That's good numbers. Davin done told them it's a lingerie party. So women is coming in this bitch. In nothing. All fucked up. Now word done got out because niggas had sidekicks then. They mass messaging niggas on kick and aim. It's going all around. Lingerie Playboy party in the penthouse. <laughs> so the cap would show up out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, shit. my chances of now getting pussy is decline. Mm -hmm. These niggas done showed up, but they was on school shit. See, Lou was like, yo, Bill, you got a good look in here. This is good. The bros want to have a good time, but we need liquor. We need hoes where they at. Niggas start trying to scrape you for you, you bitches. And it, I mean, and I mean that in the most non-derogatory sense about these women. No, I, know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. They want to know who came to the party and where they at. And you got to show them. You got the intent. I know, because I invite you. You have the intent. So now, instead of your homeboys thinking you that nigga from the hood, you got to tell them niggas to move away and then pass. So we doing that. So now I'm, I'm directing. I'm, I'm showing what's happening. I'm going room to room. I, we got a little shit going. I'm orchestrating. I'm passing out shots. Have you, have you taken a Molly yet? Ecstasy. Ecstasy. Have you taken it yet? No. Okay. We're at about this time, maybe three o'clock. Okay. It's thick. It's eight a.m. Three a.m. Okay. All I hear it's is tomorrow. Basically, gotcha. it's the next day. Something plays on that main CD player. It's an Iowa CD player. A I W A. Never forget it. I bought it for ninety nine dollars from Best Buy. Oh, Blue face. And all I could see was track twelve. Okay. And it was two, 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 and it was just like eyes was linking up. Niggas was like, this it. And at that moment I saw the party elevate this height. Here comes Davin pushing through the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and what he got in his hand? He got a he got a he he got an X peel in his hand. He's slamming his hoe in my face, and my mouth just happens to open up. Throws this X peel into my, my mouth, and it's just like from that moment, the rest of the party was just slow motion groove. Right. One girl had a negligee on. She pulls this motherfucker up. And I could see so much ass. I was like, <laughs> when is her ass going to stop <laughs> going? Because I ain't got to the top of it yet. It's just so much ass. It's like she kept pulling it up. And she's a bitch was on her back. And it was just that much ass out. Right. And she pulled that thong down. And it was, just, it was just nuts after that, dog. Niggas was screaming. It's crazy. So we, we in it. Oh, niggas getting head in the shower. It's people fucking it's it's crazy. It's it's like a Luke party, but in the late two at mid two thousands. Right. So I'm I'm losing it. I'm like, okay, cool. The twins tower. I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there now. Uh, the the twins have started with a T. Uh, they down here. TNT. TNT. Then it, then it came down. I put one T in the room. I'm in the circus room. Right. I show them. The, I show them. The room that's got the tars and shit in it. They looking around. It's cool. We go in the circus room, and this woman crawls into this cage, pulls her drawers down, and got her naked ass exposed. And she says, "Fuck me like I'm a tiger." At that point, I yell, "Get out!" Everybody, everybody out. I need it. I don't know why I'm a hard already. Because you got a tiger fucker. That's why you hard. So you got I, the tiger fucker. I am fucking her and getting gouged in the chest with a lock. <laughs> There's a lock on this cage that doesn't come off. Because the the, the cage is made out of uh, uh, elastic wiring mm -hmm. that stretches. 
so you can get in there and out of there. She in there and I am fucking her in this cage. To no avail. Sounds like you're wrong. Oh. Sounds like you're wrong. Definitely okay, wrong. Okay, I want to get that out there. I'm going to let you know that right now. I, I, just, I, I just want to. Listen, listen. I'm with you. I'm with you. Jack, 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 I'm with you. I don't agree, but I'm with you because I can see myself in a position like that. Like, God damn. Man. Go ahead, bro. And, and Davin made the suggestion, in which he did. He decided that he was going to tape condoms to his dick. He took some black Devin tape. is a wild ass boy. He said, he said, I don't need no kids. I can't risk it. I got shit I want to do. He put a condom on his dick and taped the, <laughs> the edge down. He said, if I'm a fuck. What kind of tape? tape? Black electrical tape. So, no homo. Any letter, remember that. Black electric tape. On top of a condom. On top of a condom on his dick. Who gonna let that in them? Just it's cool. Just keep that right there. Okay. So I'm fucking one of the twins. Okay. Going at it. Going at it. Niggas opening the door, being childish. That nigga Bill going to work. Hey nigga, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so at this point, I'm I don't need no help. I'm doing damage. This girl is yelling. It's so much dick in me. It's so much. It's so much dick. And I'm like, yeah, it is, ain't it? It's a lot of dick in there, ain't it? I'm talking shit. I'm smacking ass through this cage. So, so through the door comes a silhouette of a body. All I see is a towel floating in the air. White towel. Who is it? Devin. Davin. Davin got no pants on and a white towel over his arm. You got the tape on the dick. Wait. He got a silver tray with two glasses of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about drink for the lady, drink for you, sir. <laughs> so I'm fucking and I'm trying my best. Not to look at this nigga. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> he hands me some champagne that's lukewarm. I don't want. I'm, I take the champagne. I'm trying not to look. Now she's yelling out this elastic wire of the cage. I can't take this. He's screaming. <laughs> Davin says, drink for the lady. She says, yes, I need. And she reaches her hand out. And he lets the drink fall and pushes his dick towards her face. I'm like, Davin, this nigga is ruining the moment. So, so, so look, I'm like, oh, this nigga tripping. All right, I got to hurry up and get out of here. This nigga tripping. So I'm thinking she's going to freak out. She's like, get more champagne. Oh, my God. She got this nigga dick in her hand. So Davin's lit. He now is elbowing and hitting me. To move so he can fuck. Dick in, right? Yeah, because he he not he not take. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Chill He's out. Sticking on the shit on his dick. dick. <laughs> Listen, at this point, the duck, the black electric tape is cut this fucking circulation off. <laughs> it's like a clamp hose of blood <laughs> building up. All this little tape and then the rest of his dick. I'm like, bruh, you 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 gonna fuck around? He's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care. So C. Lou comes in. C. Lou says, Davin, get your weird ass out of here before I slap the shit out you. You ain't going to whoop me. He slaps Davin in the chest. And then Davin's like, all right, and walks out. <laughs> Behind C. Lou is the sister to the girl that I'm fucking. He lays her on the bed. They start fucking. So I'm like, I got to get out of here. I'm done. This is cool. We got these sisters yelling in here. Capitals is coming in looking like, yo, your boy's going in and uh, they go back out. This girl screaming. She's still having a good time. She's like, oh, we got more. Now it's the sound off. It's like, I can't let you outshine me. Now it's fucked up. I started before you came in here, but I can't let you see me finish before you do. That's my thing. Because I'm taking it as a personal challenge. You didn't enter into the lion's den. 
I got a tiger in the cage. You in the streets now, man. Yeah, I'm man. in them. I'm I'm putting in work. I'm doing some some <laughs> some e Honda right now. Oof, <laughs> Hey, I'm going in. So I start. I was like, God. you know how you be fucking and you smell something. I was like, God, God damn, what the fuck is that? I was like, it's, it smells like butt. And I don't know whose butt it is. They got some motion going on at this table. It's like somebody shit it today, but it's definitely in the air. It's weird for me. I got to get out of here because it's butt in the air. Butt in the air. Get out of there. Boom. Blow that load. I like. F I said, fuck it. I'm done. I roll out. I said, baby, you want to get out of here? She was like, yeah, let's just go. Let's get some food. All right, cool. As I'm walking out, Davin <laughs> is laying in the floor the whole time in the darkness. No way. Grabs my leg like a walking dead zombie. I said, get your bitch. I kick this nigga and get out of there. I leave him in there with C. Lou and the, and the other chick. I go back to the party. I go in there. Niggas is passed out. A pool of vomit is on the floor. Niggas have thrown up in the moat in the castle room. I go in the room in here in the other room where the zombies at. It's some hood niggas fucking a white girl in this tree. I said, bruh, y'all know where this <laughs> random fucking party is this? Listen, where did this white girl come from? Because see, at this time, why the are, tree? First of all, where the white girl come from? <laughs> We don't know no white girls like right. that, dog. It's only one white girl we knew in most city, Kelly Bub, and she was the known white girl that was dealt with niggas in this in in Mo City. Nigga, where did this white girl come from? I'm freaking out because I'm trying to figure out where this white girl came from. I'm not racist. I just don't need no problem with the police. Right. We in the middle of Texas, bunch of niggas. These hood niggas, obviously, they talking so reckless to this white woman. I, ma'am, are you okay? <laughs> <sighs> I just, oh God. I'm like, all right, you know what? I got to get out of here. Because they are, they are fucking her like she don't know her father. <laughs> and judging by her appearance, she looks like she know her father very well. So I'll close the door. I'll leave out of there. I go back into the kitchen. Niggas is taking shots. Davin comes strolling his ass out. Okay, who wants it? Dicks for, dicks for sale. Who's going to get it? This is a mixed room. It's niggas and women in here. This nigga is super drunk. He says this shit to some dude I don't know. Dude's like, hey man, get your gay ass on. That nigga Davin says, I knock your bitch ass out, nigga. In my drawers. <laughs> I say, all right, he drunk. Let me step in. Hey, bro, chill. That nigga good. You good? I'm trying to get the dude to chill with good. No, no, no. He's old pussy ass capper niggas in here and got beside himself. <laughs> Why he say that? For I know it. Niggas done stole on this nigga. Now he getting stomped. He getting stomped out. And he getting stomped out by the most unsuspecting people. It's the married niggas that's done showed up to kick it with <laughs> the, the graduate bros. It's so many square toes on this nigga. Because that's what was in. Square, square toes, toes, right, right. It's square toes all on this nigga chin. <laughs> they, they is kicking the shit out this nigga. <laughs> they kick this nigga out the room, down the hallway, energizer, grab him and take him out. And I'm like, Davin, bro, you got to chill. Now nah, that put that nigga didn't want it with me. I was like, bro, you drunk and you tripping. I, I knock you out. I was like, bro, I'm not doing this with you. So I go and lock this nigga in the suite. I tell him there's some girls in the suite. I lock him in there. Leave the room. I'm fucked up, D. I'm this this ex done hit me. Lit. I'm, starting, I'm having epiphanies. It's, it's chicks everywhere. Shit's going bonkers. I go back to the circus room. I'm walking in, and no lie, it smelled like the devil. Asshole. <laughs> Shit hit my nose so hard. I said, What the fuck is that? I flipped the lights on. 
to flip all the lights on. This bed is so bloody and brown. I damn near throw up in my mouth. I'm a, oh shit. What the fuck? Nigga. I guess old girl either caught her period or somebody didn't wipe good. But this white comforter is fucked up. <laughs> Ain't no putting this back like we wasn't there. Right. And this is a party foul. Yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody got to pay for this, this shit. Fuck this whole room. Yeah, somebody got to pay for this shit. Somebody going to pay for this. So I grab the comforter, throw one in, throw another in, roll it up, and I'm running with a shitty comforter. <laughs> shitty period comfort, possibly. Don't know. Running down the hallway. Bad chick. She was a cheerleader at TSU. She grabbed mom. She's like, where are you going? You're not leaving. I've been looking for you all night. And for those of you that are frat boys or party dudes, when a girl says she's been looking for you all night, she's telling you, I came here to fuck with you. And if I leave empty-handed, mission is not accomplished. So I'm like, okay, I got to take this downstairs. What's wrong? What's in the comforter? What's wrong with it? Where'd you get it from? I said, I, I found it in the room. Well, what's wrong? It can't be that bad. I know she's pulling the comforter. Pulling this comforter until she rips it from under me. And exposes this motherfucker to the middle of the room. I'm looking, and everybody's like, uh, a hood nigga hollers out, oh, this nigga tripping. <laughs> oh, this nigga fucking hoes on their period. Bill out here wilding. I'm nah. This was in the room. I'm trying to take it downstairs. She was like, you didn't do this, did you? I'm like, no, I didn't. Who comes out of nowhere? Twin. Twin comes up. Tongue kisses me in the mouth. Shitty comforter with whatever on it. Surely the girl that I've been wanting to get to. Room full of people. Now we public display. She full on tongue. ex pill says, no, nah, no, nah, you kissing her back. And you doing whatever she want. She done pulled my pants down. We full on. On the dance floor. Bumping and grinding. In front of everybody. Chili the girl is watching her dreams fade away. But it's a part of her that won't leave the room. So now I'm making eye contact with her while I'm banging a chick on a dance floor with a robe on and some silk pants I got from JCPenney's. <laughs> Energizer comes in. What the fuck? <laughs> Who fucked up the comforter? Davin. <laughs> I holler out Davin. I'm going to whoop him. I'm like, nah, you can't. Just get the comforter out of here. He get the comforter out of here. Party dies down. People fucked up. And the sun is coming up. And that's when my nigga Simo, who I told you about, is on this patio. Wakes up and is banging on this glass trying to get back in. We dying laughing because he don't know where he at. And he throwing up over this balcony. We let him in. He crying. He don't know what's going on. He disoriented. He popped a handlebar on top of the drinking he did and smoked a bunch of weed. So he mad. Everybody's trying to figure out what's going on. I'm still wide the fuck awake. And who comes out after breaking the door off the hinges? Davin. Ah, he broke the door. He broke this sliding door because I could lock it. It was a Chinese sliding door. I could lock it. He broke that door open. And his dick was hard with this tape on it, with this condom on it. And he's like, I, he's yelling at girls, I got to get it out. I got to get it out. Look, get it. Just do something. This nigga is wild. Listen, we out here, niggas from the hood is like, yo, they're my niggas, but they a little different. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, nigga. It's crazy shit happening in this environment, dog. And we go down in history for the next like four years as them niggas. Now, mind you, a year and a half later, I get online, pledge Kappa. We come back two years later and throw a penthouse party for my graduation party to kind of send me off for the shit that happened this epic night. We get this party. 
that we have 2,000 people show up to. We tell everybody penthouse party after this. We passing out little, little like cut out business cards with the address to girls. We get 300 people up there. It's fucking nuts. One of I get a girl pregnant. Energizer get a girl pregnant. He end up having a kid from this night. I end up potentially having a kid from this night. The girl I was fucking with that went to U of H, she ended up having a miscarriage like three months into being pregnant. Nigga, it's crazy. A dude met his wife there. <laughs> People full on living their lives together now from this party that we had. All because niggas have snuck in. And for two years after that to like 2009, the cues from TSU were just randomly going up there, breaking in and fucking bitches up there <laughs> to try and live part of that legacy out because they found out about it after our party. It was nuts, dog. It went down, dog. Dang. Radisson on 16. I'm going to tell you something, man. We used to party like that in Vegas. You know, I did a, a VIP company. All in VIP. So what is the VIP? Explain that to us. What does that do? It was an all-inclusive service. See, I looked at it like this. <clears throat> I was a blackjack dealer, and I had access to all the players who I could see what, they, what kind of money they had because they had a card. You swipe your card, and I could see if you had a marker out, markers a loan from the casino, how much, how much loan potential you got. I knew all of them. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to just start me an all-in VIP, VIP service. Women, clubs, drugs. I only dealt with just weed. I didn't deal with, I was only bringing up. I didn't know nobody else. I only dealt with the weed. So I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm going out. I would go out and party with the clients. And I like, I see you. You come play at my table. And I see you got, you know, a nice little amount of money. Hey, man, who you partying at tonight? I don't know where to party. Hey, listen, let me set your stuff up, man. I'm a VIP host around the city. So I get you in. Hey, man, let me get you a table. Hey, man, I'm coming by myself. You, you got some girls? Yeah, I get some girls. What you want? I'm that dude. I'm putting mm. all this together. <clears throat> so I meet this dude named... Whoa, whoa, whoa. And if you're in Vegas mm -hmm. or you're anywhere in the Absolutely. city, you need some VIP treatment where you need some women or some narcotics mm -hmm. or it's a good time, Absolutely. give us a call. 323-385-9734. Three, 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 we'll get somebody over there to you. We'll get over there. Ain't no doubt about it. We'll get them to you. Yeah. So, so I meet this guy named Devin McCall. Mm. Devin has a wife. Cat. Mm. They come to my they come to my table to play with me all the time. He's a decent player. He's a doctor. Yeah. Country dude. Yeah. Got a little money. Playing maybe like four or five hundred dollars a hand, which is decent. <laughs> They've been playing for me, playing with me about three trips. Daryl get fucked up when he come to Vegas. He come to Vegas to do Vegas. He gonna sit there and gamble all day long. His wife gonna play slot machines and go do some other shit. He gonna talk some shit, talk some shit to some hookers. He that dude. <clears throat> so around their fourth trip, he says to me, he said, he's a country dude. He said, hey, D. Hey, man, I'm coming to the party. He called me. We had, yeah, I had my number. I'm coming to the party, man. The cat is coming with me. And, and I want you to show us a good time. I'm like, all right, cool. When you get there, I'll be there tomorrow. Cool. He gets there. He's at my table, getting fucked up as usual. Yeah. He said, D, I worked 4 a.m. to noon. Mm. He said, D, hey, I need you to do me a favor. What's up, man? I need you to get me some cocaine. I'm like, oh, shit. Mm -mm. Okay. All right, I'm VIP. Maybe I got to start incorporating cocaine. Shit. Yeah. Gotta learn. Gotta learn. Gotta learn. Step your shit up. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm gonna get some goddamn cocaine from. I don't know where to go. I don't know how much to ask for. I don't know. Well, fuck it. So he said, hey, man, we're gonna party. And listen, you know, you're gonna be off for the next two days. Come up to the room. We're gonna party. Part of my VIP service, these dudes who wanna hang out with me, will play, hey, man, listen, I'm gonna set everything up, but like, my, I need a thousand dollars. I'm setting everything up. That's nothing when you gamble. That's change. Because you ain't looking at this as your money. I've been gambling. I won a couple of dollars. Fuck it. So I said, fuck it. I called this guy up. This little Dominican. No, this is a little uh, Puerto Rican dude I knew. Who I knew he was dirty. He, he did a lot of shit. So I said, hey, man, I need to get some cocaine. He said, hey, come by. Mm. I go by. He said, how much you need? I'm like, fuck, I don't, just, I don't know how much. I, measurements. I, I said, fuck it. You nigga get a handful. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know how to fucking measure cocaine. You see, I don't care fuck you. How much? Like eight bottles? Yeah, I mean, how much that cost? Uh, if I give you to you for like a hundred. I was like, all right, cool. Now, all right, I'm about to mark this shit up. I'm about to mark this goddamn eight ball the fuck up. Oh, I'm about to mark it up. Because you don't know where I got this from. You don't know how much it cost me. So we get to the spot. Now, I think I'm, you can check it. You can check me if I'm wrong. But I think 175, 150, 175 is the going rate for an eight ball, I think. Mm-hmm. You can check that. Google it. Look on YouTube. We'll find out. But I think it's 175. So, so I get the. How c- much is an eight ball of cocaine? Out quick, quick. I don't think Siri got no answers for that. Nope, no answers. Keep going. So, so I got the cocaine. I go up to the room, knock on the door. Daryl opens the door in his drawers. Mm, no shirt on. Mm mm. Lit. Mm mm. Mm mm. D. Come on he in, d- man. He domestic violence drunk. Daryl is sixty something. His bitch is 70. They got another old bitch in there. It's two old bitches. Daryl and me at the door. Daryl ain't got no clothes on. In this motherfucking drawers. Lit already. Daryl been drinking. Daryl been drinking since he got off the plane. He is choloing. He needs his cocaine. Because he about to tear these women up. First thing he say, D, hey, hey, man, you got what I need? Yeah. Come on in, man. Hey, man, Kathy's in the back. Come in. Kathy got some old shit on. She this motherfucking shit in that bitch dancing. Got another old bitch with some old shit on in it. Bitch dancing. Now, at this time, I wore cowboy boots. I wore cowboy boots all the time. Jeans, cowboy boots, and a t-shirt. That's, that was my get up. Jeans, that was it. Some comfortable shit. So I go in there, and he said, hey, man, how much I owe you? I said, it's going to be a thousand. He said, God damn, cocaine's high out here. <laughs> Shit, ah, he's high. stung that nigga. God he's stung damn, that cocaine's nigga. high in Vegas. It's high. Fuck, what they mixing that shit with? Maybe Lonnie Boudreaux knows what they mixing it with. Hey, buddy. Hey, it's Lonnie. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what they mixing it with. Hope and hustle. <laughs> so, man, we get in there. And it feels uncomfortable. You know what I mean? The nigga's yeah. so caught me in his drawers. He said, hey, man, he's sitting down. He said, have a seat, man. Pour me a drink. He got his drawers on. He's sitting there. I give him the cocaine. He give me the money. He's sitting there. He said, hey, man, I know you got to run. But just have a seat for a second. Let's just unwind. I'm like, oh, shit. I know where he's going. know where we're going with this. He know where it is going. Hey, Kathy. Hey, hey Kathy. Kathy. Kathy, Kathy, come on in here. Tell me what you said about him. <laughs> she come out. Her and the old bitch come out. He said, I was saying that your boots are amazing. I'd love to wear your boots. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, buddy. It's crazy. I know where this boots. going. He said, hey, listen. D, can't they want you? Can't they never been a black? She never been a black woman. She won't you. I'm like, so what you saying? Like, I, I know the proposal. I'm like, I want to hear it. He said, how much is it going to take for you to fuck my wife? I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man. If you need somebody to fuck your wife, give us a call. 323-385-9734. We'll get somebody over there. We'll get somebody over there to you. We're going to get somebody over there to you. We'll drop some dick over there to you. We'll drop off some dick over there to you. You just hold tight. We'll get it over there to you. So I'm in there, and I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm a little uncomfortable, you know what I mean? So he put out a thousand dollars, and I was like, "Oh, now nah, I feel like a hoe." <laughs> oh, nigga just told me my dick worth a thousand. Oh, okay, take the first off. <laughs> Got it. Uh, uh, ah, nah. I was like, man. I said, I said, no. I said, no, man. It's you know, nah. He said, why? Well, it's not enough money. Nah, it's really a nah. Hell, 2000 and that's it. And I was like, man, nah, I can't do it. Kathy, what you say? How much you want? I was like, man, like 5000 What the hell's wrong with you? (laughs) 
<laughs> you done disrespected this man. He mad to him up. He got questions. What kind of dick you got? <laughs> Hell, five thousand dollars worth of dick. The cocaine's high. The dick's high. <laughs> Hell. I'm like, oh my gosh. So she says, I just want you to watch me while he fuck me. You know, I want to imagine, you know, it's you. Well, how much is that going to be? I'm like, you know, I'll take a thousand. Can you pull your dick? No, it's going to be another five. That dick ain't coming out. The dick is not coming out. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm about to watch this old ass couple fuck. And I got to act happy about it. There you go. I got to look into it. And the old bitch, she ain't even saying shit. She just in that motherfucker. Just, just, like, what are you doing? Who brought you here? You're just in here. <laughs> right? You're just in here. Like, nobody's introduced you. You ain't saying shit. You're just somebody's You're old. just in here. You're just an old bitch in here in old lingerie. <laughs> That's a negligee. She had a negligee on. So I'm sitting there. But she's not saying nothing the whole time. Nothing. So it's the like Earl say, you know what? I'm finna do this cocaine first. Earl pulled a whole goddamn, he had a little bag. Earl, Earl pulled all the cocaine out. Nigga nose diving that bitch. Ah, sniffing it. Kathy, come get you some. Kathy, come get us some. They do anything. And, uh, oh, this is the worst. I've never seen old people fuck. This was, oh, this is disgusting. So Kathy, get on, she get on her knees. Just old. Just old. Just getting on her knees old. Just, it ain't even, getting on your knees supposed to be a sexy part of the dick set. You calm, you, you know, you, you make, this motherfucker is old. Just holding on to the bed. Just get down. She got to leverage this motherfucker. She slide down a little bit, put one leg down. She one leg down. Ah, she get up. She lay on the ass out that hurt. Hand me a pillow. She get the pillow. She get back up. She money. Ah! <laughs> I'm like, this is the, and he ain't, he ain't paid by This is no, he not, that bitch, they still ain't say it. She's in the corner, right by the blind, you know, with the, with the, with the, with the, the, the blinds, like, with the bitch is a vampire. So, <laughs> <laughs> a 70 year old vampire. Kathy Secadero, old dick, they're sitting there, and she's trying to look at me, and I'm looking, I'm trying to look excited about the shit, and it's bad, and they start fucking, and I'm looking, and she's, it's bad. It's bad, right? So everybody finished. So she says, I want to keep the boots. How much for the boots? They said, they, these motherfuckers are bidding on everything. It, it showcase showdown. These motherfuckers are bidding on everything. It is showcase showdown. And everything for sale, too, goddamn it. it, it when you Make in, no mistake about it. All this shit is for sale. Right. How much for the boots? I said, the boots are going to be $1,000. God damn! <laughs> Your dick's 5000 <laughs> The coke? The boots a thousand. The cocaine a thousand. Hell, I'm losing. <laughs> God damn. Some bitch. Captain, you're going to have to pass on some of this shit. <laughs> Hell, I can't afford it. She taking this shit. It's, it's how I'm, I'm motherfucking. When I tell you I'm overcharging them for what they did to the cold crush. You getting it. Hell, back. I don't even know the cold crush. <laughs> What'd they, What'd they do? They do? <laughs> <laughs> What'd they do? Yeah, I was like, wow, exactly. But I, I remember, I was like, I just, I wouldn't feel, com I just didn't feel comfortable in that position. Like, you know what I mean? It just, I got it. First of all, I got to be attracted. I don't care what the money is. I got to be, no, I got to attract the T for the 5000 I would imagine some other shit. But I just got to be, I got to, it don't work for me like that. I mean, n it never works when it's like that, dog. I mean, unless you're just on savage mode and you got a point to prove. Uh, Davin Tesno, dog. He fucks old chicks. Old, young. He don't care. I mean, this is he's about to be married for the second time. So we got to say this shit before he get married. Again. Hurry up and get it out there. Hurry up. And as soon as we do this shit, Go ahead and edit it and shoot this motherfucker out right away before Devin. We don't want no shit from his wife. But I, this is uh, this is uh, before he got married the first time. Me and Devin, we going out. Now, I got a 1993 BMW 325i. Cut up. This is 2004. I get the car. 
2005, I get into a small fender bender, fuck my front end up. 2006, my senior year, I'm graduating. I put the car in the shop. I get some money from a grant and get it all fixed. New paint job, new interior, door handles, everything. Car immaculate. It looks back stock. I said, I want everything back stock like it was when, when he left the factory. They got this shit back mint condition delay. New headlights, all my light bulbs is new. So the car looks like a brand new old car. So I got my car out the shop. I'm I'm ready to roll. I go to the to the wash and get a coat of wax put on it to lock that paint in. It's been sitting up for a week at my dad's house, but I just couldn't get out there. Now this all comes off the heels of some bad trading that I did for a 1970 Mercedes 300D diesel. I bought this car as a come up. I thought I came up. The dude sold me the car for $400. I couldn't believe it. I drove the car around for a day, put a full tank of diesel in it, and I got to the mall in my new old Mercedes, went to go cut it off. The bitch wouldn't cut off. I freak out. I jump in the car, drive that bitch to my daddy's house. I'm calling my daddy. I said, Daddy, this car won't fucking cut off. I get to my old man's house, pull up in the driveway. He tell me to pull the car in the back of the yard. The car runs for a week. <laughs> After we go through trying to figure out how to cut it off, he said, like, well, shit, uh, uh, goddamn it, uh, uh, take the battery loose. He took the battery loose, took the battery out. We go in there, we disconnect the goddamn wires to the goddamn, this bitch still running. Weak to that gas tank empty out. He blocks the car in with another car, and then the car just sits back there for like months. So finally, I decided to fix my car that I had, my BMW, and this is me finally getting the car out. So I get the car out. I hit Davin. I'm just like, Davin, what's up? I got my car at the shop. We're going out tonight. We're going to this place called Dreams. We're going to link over with my manager, K. Reed. Kevin Reed was his name. We, my Masonic brother. Me and Davin, we both Masons too. That's a whole other story. So uh, we're going to link up with them and go out. He said, yeah, cool. I'll get the car waxed up by some fiends down the street by TSU off of uh, off of uh, Sky Street. Right there, this orange car wash. We headed out, me and Davin. We get off 610. Traffic is kind of bagging up for some construction. We exit, and we're going to take the feeder road and hop on uh, Westheimer. Right. On the feeder road, we stop at a light. Out of nowhere, wham! Car runs into the back of us. My head hits the dry, uh, the, the driving, uh, the steering wheel. My my boy John Rashawn, he in the car in the passenger seat. His head hit the fucking front. Davin's head hits the back of my seat. Davin jumps up, gets out the car, runs up, starts kicking the other nigga car who hit us. He's what the fuck are you doing? The dude gets out. Davin starts throwing rocks at this nigga from the freeway. Davin is a savage. Listen. For real. The, the dude gets out the you, car. The dude gets out the car. He got a Bennigan's outfit on. He's a bartender from Bennigan's. He tow up drunk. Masking with a ponytail. He's like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm so fucked up. Man, I pulled a double. I've been fucking drinking Jaeger all day. I'm fucking drunk. So Mexican dude's like, no, I, I, it's cool, man. We're going to get it worked out. We'll get the damage covered. I'm looking at the back of my car. It ain't that bad. But I'm just like, man, this is fucked up. I just got my car out. He's like, let me call the insurance company. He fumbling, looking for insurance card. K. Reed pulls up because I didn't text him and told him he had an accident. He was like, y'all all right? My homeboy, Sydney, and Sydney's a bodyguard, bouncer. He's six, six, like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, 320, 340, in that range. Swole, play outside linebacker for the school. He there. He like, y'all good? I'm like, no, nah, we good, man. We good. But Davin, I think he got warrants. Davin's like, yeah, I got warrants, man. I got to get out of here. So they take Davin out to go drop him off back at the school, and they going to fuck with us later. We wait on the police to come. Police don't show up. All I see down the street, headlights. Headlights coming down the street. It's a Jeep. It gets closer. This motherfucker's on the back of this fucking car. White boy. Is driving his Jeep, an Asian swinging a chain. Like, goddamn Ben Hur. He jump off. 
The white boy runs up and he says, hey, man, you the dude to hit my buddy with a rock? And I'm, I'm like, the fuck? Nah. He hits your nigga with no aim. Boom. This nigga punches me. He hits me in my face and I leave my feet. I feel my body going over my front hood of my car and my head hits the curb and my feet are on top of my head. Hit me so hard. I never hit that hard my, my whole life. And I was like, I got to kill this nigga because this nigga's going to kill me. John Rashawn opens the door. He get out. He immediately punches the driver. The driver's standing behind the white dude. It's an Asian dude. They jumping off the back of this car. Two Asian dudes, a big old white dude, and then the driver that's masking. He punches the driver, break his nose, spill this nigga blood all over his face. He fall out. White dude, let me tell you what he looked like. He looked like the dude that was the bodyguard, Steve Wilco from the old school Jerry Springer show. Mm -hmm. White boy like that. I was like, hey, man, you got me fucked up. So I grab a big piece of concrete, and I'm running with this concrete to hit this white boy. I don't know how he timed it, but he put his hand up. The concrete shattered on his forearm, and the nigga choked me. Started choking me. So I'm trying not to let this nigga kill me. I say, John, get this nigga. John reaches in the back. He grabbed a cap of cane that we got in the car out my back window. He hits this nigga back in the head with a cap of cane, breaks the cane open. The nigga, the white dude falls over. We start stomping. <laughs> we stomping. We are like, we from Harlem. Like, no, nah, son, this nigga go get this shit, B. Like, we stomping this nigga out. Other Chinese dude then took the chain. He just started hitting my car. I'm freaking out. Like, yo, what the fuck? Like, Nobody beats the car up. Right. What the fuck is happening? So we start whooping. We jumping everybody at this point. We jumping everybody. I feel my lips swelling up. I can taste blood in my mouth because I done got hit in this, my, my mouth from the white boy knocking me over the car. I'm going to stomp this white dude out. We now is chasing this little Chinese dude around the car with a chain. He trying to hit us with this chain. We finally wrangle this nigga down and start jumping him. It's full on world star shit right. out here. It's another Asian dude. He got karate skill. He kicking and shit. So he kicking. The other white boy done got up. John squabbling with him in the middle of the street. They duking it out. Squabbling. I'm doing karate shit with this Asian dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga don't know no karate. Now look, 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 look. I used to do karate. I'm a second degree black belt. Okay. But it's too late for that. <laughs> My 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 tactic is is patience is running low. I'm trying to find a way. We both is a step away from somebody got to grab that leg. That's what I'm thinking. When he kicked the next time, I'm grabbing that leg. So he kick, I grab that leg, and he punches me over here, hits me in my jaw, and I'm like, I got to kill this nigga because he done punched me in my mouth, and I'm 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 finna try to kill this nigga. Hope I, I hope this nigga dies. So I'm trying to choke this nigga. I got his leg up. I'm trying to choke this nigga out. He choking me, we choking each other. Nobody's passing out, but we choking the shit out of each other. <laughs> this choking is not working, and I done resulted. I'm sorry. Nobody's I'm sorry. choking successful. <laughs> it's like we both choking, it's just tiring us out. Right. It's like it's not enough to black me out, but it ain't enough to where I can just get away. So I say, you know what? Fuck it. Y'all can be mad. I did some bitch shit. Scratch this nigga in his face. Had to. Took a whole <laughs> handful. And I dug in this shit, and I'm pulling down, and I'm pulling skin, everything, trying to rip this nigga nostril skin off. Right. I'm scratching his face up. I'm scratching, trying to claw everything I Every can. Every dirty thing you could oh, do. I'm spitting everything, because I'm a spitter. That's what I, that's what I get mad. Spitter. You know I'm mad, I'm a spit, spit on you. That's the first thing, because I want you to know I'm, I'm upset. Most niggas slap, you spit. I used to slap, but my first you step grew. now you is it's a spit. You grew. I'm pff, fuck you, nigga. Something. That's disrespect. I, Cause I gotta know. I know him if I lose, cause my losing potential is high. Right. You gotta accept that over thirty. You can get right. your ass whooped. Right. But you'll never forget I spit on you. You gonna remember that, that forever. Stay with you. That's gonna stay with you. That's that bitch ass nigga that spit on me. That's a lot of bitch. niggas, man. You you may have got knocked out a couple times in your life, but you will never forget the nigga that spit on you. I hope it land in your mouth. So. I'm trying to scratch this nigga eyes out. And as I look back, traffic has bagged up for a mile and a half. It's two niggas in a car smoking weed, watching us, 
fight for salvation <laughs> against every race of the world. <laughs> we done fought a Mexican, an Iranian, white boy, an Asian. We out here duking it out. And these niggas is smoking his weed. Enjoying you know, the floor show. He gonna yell out, get that nigga, cuz. Right. Motherfucker. After that, I feel a sharp pain in my back. This Asian then came that we had stomped out early. He then came and hit me with that chain. So he hit me in my back with this chain. I'm trying to cover up. I'm getting choked. I got my How hand big in his chain? face. It's like, it's like the size of the chain that you put around your gate to keep it from opening. You know what I'm saying? It ain't bike chain, but it's a step size bigger than that. John is over here. He done put them hands on this white boy and worked him down to a widow. And at that moment, I looked over and all I could see was police lights coming in the opposite direction. I'm like, fuck, we going to jail. It's cool. I immediately put my hands up. As I get closer to seeing these police get closer to me, they jump out. All black. They beat the shit out the white boy and the Asian. <laughs> HPD definitely Somebody should just file a class action lawsuit or something. Because they is fucking these people up. Illegal chokeholds, everything. <laughs> Billy Club, you know, I knew it was some shit finna come because they had their shit and it was dragging. The, you know, you know the slide out Billy Club? Yeah. Not the one with the handle, but the, 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 the nigga that do that, he, he a professional because he got sparks coming up off his shit. He running like a Super Saiyan <laughs> with, and is on knees, chest. Get the fuck beating the shit out of them. I'm like, yeah, they, him right there, officer. That's the one that beat my car. Get him. All black. Everybody black. Black police. Lady, y'all all right. They beat, they fucking them up. We know what you did. They beating the shit out of them. The jail? They going to jail. Now, unfortunately, they done cracked my windshield, so my car got to get towed. And I ain't got no registration, so I got to go get my car registered to get my car out. Plus, they put a $40 per day storage fee on my car, plus the charge of the tow, which is like almost $500 all together with them towing it. So it's high and it's going up every day. And I got to get the registration. So all this is happening right now. I'm fucked up. And who pulls up? In the Chrysler 300. Drunk than a skunk. Laughing with two bitches in the back seat. Dabbing Dabbing. Tez, no. He pulls up, rolls the window down, looks me in my eyes and says, Did you miss me? That was Shit. an hour? That was an hour? Are you serious? Done. Really? 